24, then 12 through 28. And we want to tag this one and put, let it be the subject of God's will will be done. God's will will be done. Father, we pray now, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be holy and acceptable in thy sight. For thou art my rock and my redeemer. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Jacob is now 107 years old. And he's dwelling in the land where Abraham, his father, which was his grandfather, was a stranger. Abraham journeyed in the land of Canaan. Canaan was the promised land that the children of Israel enters when they leave Egypt. Jacob is now living in the land that Abraham passed through. Help us hold the Many times we have to endure the same things that our parents and our grandparents went through. Life has a way many times of becoming full circle. The narrative continues with Joseph being 17 years old. The older brother Reuben was 29 and Benjamin was talked out to be um, seven or eight years old. And Jacob loves Joseph because he was the son of his old age. Tom Passant, in the book, Genesis and King Lear, Joseph's many colored coat suits Shakespeare. The remarkable figure of Joseph shines as a luminary in the scriptures of five different religions. To the Jews, he is the Abrahamic link between Moses and the 12 tribes of Israel. To Christians, he is a predecessor to the suffering Christ. To Muslims, he is the only prophet the Quran devotes an entire chapter to. Joseph is one of the 12 sons of Jacob, and he's very important in the plan of God. And I want you to look at your neighbor, don't touch him, but just tell him you are very important in the plan of God. And, and you are here on this earth for a reason. Amen. Amen. Now Jacob loves Joseph because he was the son of his old age. Here again we have cycles. Because Isaac loved Esau for his venison. He, he loved Esau. Go back and read it. Isaac, his daddy, loved Jacob's twin brother because of his deer sausage. <laughs> That's what venison is. Venison is deer meat. He yeah. loved him because of his deer sausage. Yeah. Now, it turns around, it's a generational curse. My God. Now, Jacob loves Joseph because he's the son of his old age. Yeah. Yeah. And parental partiality will get you in trouble. Yes, Lord. Yes. Parental partiality, I wish I could preach this like I feel it. Go ahead on man. Parental partiality, if you've got more than one child, That's it. you favor one. If uh -uh. it got quiet, can't nobody say ah, amen. Ah, ah. You, you favor one, you, just, you love them both, but you favor one. Ah, ah. My, my kids used to call my hand on it. And when they would call my hand on it, I'd get upset. That ain't true. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about that. Just, 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 just go to your room. The girls always say, as my wife just said, you favor children. It's true. Uh. They grown, I can tell you, it was true. He was the only son. A lot of stuff he did, I'm like, oh, that's just a boy being a boy. If they did it, give me my belt. Is it right? No. I was wrong before God. I'm wrong. I repented a many a day. When they would tell me, Daddy, you partial. All I do is get upset. That ain't true. I love all y'all the same. I did love them all the same. Mm. I just favor 
Jordan a little bit more. Jordan carried my name, say. Jordan never talked back. Girls a little more mouthy. They try me every now and then. I ain't never been one that like too much mouth. <laughs> and so, now my wife, she was pretty fair all the way across the board. But me, they knew. I, I never forget. My wife told me one time, you need to whoop that boy, Miss Early. And if you don't whoop him, I'm a tamer. I'm like, you gonna whoop him over that? Over that? So I got the belt, and she was counting the licks. You ain't did nothing to him. Give him some more. And so I'm looking at Jordan, and I wouldn't even do this. I mean, but you know, I got to live in that room. I got to live here. So I started hitting the wall. Pop! And I said, just holler. Ah! 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 <laughs> because many times, parents are portion. <clears throat> the Bible tells us not to be. We're Porsche. I love all my children. I give them everything I got. But it's something about that boy carrying that name. Jacob loved Joseph more than he loved his other sons, and it was apparent. It wasn't covert, it was open. But I like the way the scholars put it. He loved him more, but it didn't spoil him. Yes. Okay. He, he, he made sure he worked. He, he didn't make him good for nothing. Yeah. And sometimes, I, I, I'm going to say this in love, but I, I pray St. Paul don't email me or come up here and get me. But sometimes women, mothers, can be too soft on their boys. Yep. Yeah, sometimes you can. Yep. Yes, that's true. We put lace on their jeans. Make them sorry. <laughs> we feminize them. Yeah. <clears throat> but in actuality, we're hurting them more than we're helping them. Yeah. And I've now seen it in the last 20, 30 years where men now can stay at home and a woman go to work. Nobody said nothing. And it's amazing in the atmosphere that we all grew up in here. Because I can look at us in the all in here tale. Yeah. We all 40 and over. Yes. That used to be the way it was. Right. It used to be the, be the time when the, the man went out and made a way, found a way, right. scratched a way. Yes. But now the man is so much prettier than the woman. Yeah. He's worried about his hair more than the woman's worried about her hair. He, he wants to drive the better car, and her car is breaking down. I, I've never seen it on this wise, where there's been such a changing of the guard, where people, where men are no longer wanting to take responsibility. They want to play. They want to play. They want to play, but they don't want to pay. They don't want to pay to be the boss. But God called a man to be a man. And to take care and lead his family. Yeah. Amen. And so he didn't make him sorry. Yeah. He gave him a job. Uh -huh. And Joseph was diligent to his job. Yes, yeah. But Jacob made a mistake, a fatal mistake. Yes, Lord. He made Joseph a coat. Yeah. A coat of many colors. The problem was not that he made the coat, Miss Angela. The problem was not that he made the coat, Miss Glenda, Miss Jasmine. No, the coat, the, the coat problem. It wasn't that. The problem wasn't that he made the coat, dog. Yeah. The problem was he didn't make the other eleven a coat. That's yeah. right. And so when you give, when you do for one, yeah, that's it. you're supposed to do for all. Yeah, that's right. Let me say that again. Right. When we do for one child, we're supposed to do for all of them. Yes. If we have multiple children. Yeah. But you and I both know uh -huh. that every now and then, Miss Linda just laughing back there, uh -huh. every now and then, you sneak.
take a little something, something to one of them and tell them, don't tell nobody else. Can I get a hey, man? Hey, man. See, but, but this here was not a little money you could put in the bank. This here was not a watch or a trinket. This here was a coat. And so therefore, when he put it on, everybody recognized daddy was working on that coat for you. But daddy, we already know daddy don't care that much for us. But he's going to have the audacity to give you the coat. And you so crazy, you put it on in front of us. And the Bible says that he, they envied him. That, that means that they envied him that there was bitterness. Yes. There was strife. Mm -hmm. They couldn't even stand to see him or speak peaceably to him. Wow. They hated Joseph for two reasons. First of all, you daddy's favorite son. Yeah. Secondly, you got a coat. They were upset. Jacob loved him more. Yeah. Jacob didn't seem to try to conceal his feelings. He was like, it is what it is. <laughs> Get with it, baby. It, it is what it is. That's my favorite. <laughs> but jealousy, according to the Song of Solomon, 8 and 6, it's cruel as the grave. It's bad enough, Joe. Jacob loves him more. Gave him a coat of many colors. And if that isn't bad enough, Jacob, I mean, Joseph has two dreams. I, I'm not going to go through the dreams. I, I'll just tell you what they meant. The dreams simply meant that first of all, the first dream was all the brothers would bow down to him. Right. Oh, you know he didn't mess up. Lord, yeah. that's right. You know he, he didn't mess up. You mean to tell me you already got his faith? You wear a little old state coat, <laughs> and now you have the audacity to tell me you had a dream. When they heard it, they thought he was being arrogant. Yeah. Yeah. When, when they heard it, they thought he was full of himself. Yeah. Yeah. You mean to tell me you got so much pride and arrogance that you're going to flood this before us and then have the audacity to tell us we're going to bow down to you? Corinthians 2 and 9 through 10a says, I have not 
seen. Come on now, that's it. No, you ain't heard. That's it. Yeah. Neither have they entered into the heart of man uh -huh. the things which God had prepared for them right. that love him. Yeah. But God had revealed them unto us by his spirit. Yes. The dreams he were having were coming from God from the spirit world. Yes. They, they were a preview of upcoming attractions. Right. But that wasn't for everybody. You got to understand something. You and I living in this 21st century yes. and being Westerners, we've got to be careful because every time God tells us something, we think it's, we think it's all about us. Right. The dream didn't have anything to do with Joseph. The dream was about saving the world at that time. And so all the we get so caught up with me, myself, and I that we missed the point. The point was not that people would be bound to him. The point was God was going to use him with his wisdom to save the world. That's it. Watch this. That's right. God gave him a dream. Yeah. But it's going to be later on in Egypt. That's right. The interpretation of dreams is going to bring him to the, to the top. Yes. Your gifts that God has given us. That's what's going to take us somewhere. Yes. I, I, I was listening to Miss Jacqueline read out all of the accolades of all of the graduating seniors. Yes. And I said, man, that's awesome to be able to, because I wish now, uh -huh. at my age, I could take the mind I have now and go back and be graduating this year. Yes. I promise y'all, about right now, uh -huh. things will be a lot different. Yes. Because when I came out, my mind wasn't on taking care of business. Yeah. But when I got to TSU campus, when I got there, it was about hanging out in the rec hall. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And it was about playing ping pong and shooting pool. It was about dancing. It was about doing this. But it was about everything besides what I should have been doing, which is taking care of business. My grandfather would say, TC Box, TCBY, taking care of business, yes. Some pit. 
dreamers always hit us. You know what got Dr. King killed? He had a dream. But whenever you have a dream, there's always a sniper trying to shoot you. There's always somebody trying to take you out because you don't think like them. You think on a higher plane. You don't act like them because you have a higher calling. And so whenever you have a dream, you always have a sniper. You've got to be careful who you share your dreams with because you could be sharing your dreams with the one who's there to snipe you, to kill you. You may be sharing the dream with the one who wants to know where you're going to be so they can pick you off. Because everybody has a moment that they step out on a Lorraine Motel balcony and just want to look around and see what's going on out there. But there's always a sniper out there to shoot the dreamer. Look at your neighbor, say, neighbor, don't let someone kill the dream. You got to hold the dream and believe that God is going to make a way out of no way for you. They say, come. Let us kill the dream. Here and again is a generational curse. Because Jacob employed trickery. And now his son's about to operate sleight of hand. As Malcolm X said, the chickens are coming home to roost. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. The brother said, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Come, let us slay him and cast him into the pit. They threw him into the pit. <laughs> and Ms. Earlene, watch this. They got cold blooded on him. They, they threw him in the pit, Ms. Angela. Then they turned around and ate a chicken sandwich. <laughs> because the Bible says, the Bible says, read it for yourself. They threw him in the pit and then they, they ate lunch. They started eating. They didn't have no feelings for him being in a pit. When they threw him in the pit, they ate to get their strength up. There's some people in life that throw you in the pit and eat lunch right after they do it. There's some people that will throw you in the pit and throw a party while you're sitting there going through it. I wish I had help. There are some people that will lie on you, watch you go through, and praise God on a Sunday morning.
was killing the dream. Yes. But God's will yes. will be done. That's right. God had to get Joseph to Egypt. Yes. Now watch this. He could have got Joseph to Egypt another way. Uh -huh. But Joseph's mouth allowed him to go through this trial to get there. I don't know how God was going to get him there. Uh -huh. But he may not have had to go through this trial. It was because he spoke too much. He oh, told too God. much. But God said, I can still use it. I don't care how you get there. Just get there if you can. Uh -huh. It don't matter how you get there. I just need you in Egypt. Uh -huh. They sold him into Egypt. Lord, have mercy. Now the brothers are in trouble. Because they thought it was Joseph. And I say this to us, parents, grandparents, aunties, uncles. Watch how we deal with the children's dreams. Yes, Lord. That's good. That's real good. Because Gamaliel said this in the book of Acts. He was a teacher, a professor of the doctor of the law. He told Paul, he said, if this thing be a man, it'll come to naught. But if it be a God, God, who can stop it? That's it. That's good. You'll find yourself, he said, paraphrasing, fighting God. Uh -huh. Be careful how we handle young people. That's yeah. it. That's right. But when they tell us something, I don't care if they're in kindergarten, like Ms. Ernie gave the kindergartners. I don't, I don't care how old they are. Be careful. That's right. Because we don't know where that dream came from. That's and we could be crushing a dream yeah. that God really intends to bring to pass. God's will yes. 